All right, uh, greetings family. Uh, this is Bomani Tayamba and uh, welcome to our Africa for the Africans uh, tour conference call for uh, April 21st, uh, 2024, uh, the journey of a lifetime. So this uh, definitely wanted to uh, get everybody uh, connected to what we have on the schedule. Uh, some of the schedule has uh, changed uh, as far as uh, uh, next year. And this one also, this... Uh, share our updates from our last uh, few journeys. Uh, we just got back from Liberia on our country number 10, uh, country number 11 and 12, and also this our first journey for 2024. 20, uh, so always a good journey going to Africa. These are two new countries and uh, it was a great experience. And on top of that experience, it also just let us know what we need to move forward uh, in Africa, and uh, as we uh, uh, come up on uh, 18 years of traveling to the African continent, and we always want to stick to our program as far as you know, our repatriation, pan-Africanism, and just uh, getting us connected to uh, the African continent. So with uh, that many countries, you know, you're able to evaluate and compare and, you know, and just really give a realistic uh, field and view of uh, what we're looking to do. So the next journey that we have set is our Ghana, July 11th to the 23rd. And uh, based on that experience, this uh, let me know uh, that uh, we have selected the right country and the right energy to build a certain, you know, uh, you know certain movements and our reconnection in. And uh, that uh, Liberia, Liberia is literally my uh, sixth country in West Africa. And uh, what I've seen and also the other countries that I haven't been to, I've had, you know, close um, associates of mine, uh, check the different countries out. And so that's where we're heading. We're heading to Ghana, where we're looking to build that uh, Black Star Pan-African community and also give you a proper introduction into Africa, a proper connection and a proper feel, uh, because not all countries have the right energy to this really just get you connected. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to share with you is a schedule of this uh, the countries that uh, we're sticking with for now. And... Uh, looking to this build up on and move forward. And Nagana is uh, still that uh, main country. And this is one of my classic uh, Africa for the Africans, uh, you know, Ghana t-shirts. And uh, it symbolizes the energy of just the colors, the energy in this, us continue to work on a program um, to where we can you know, build a future and a future connection in Africa. Uh, so uh, that's one of the things I learned from uh, my uh, Liberia journey and experience. And I'm always uh, looking for the, the other countries that we're looking to connect with uh, to, you know, uh, step their game up and uh, work on what we have just empowered and connect with uh, different um, groups of people that we're working in different countries, you know, but you know, so uh, and looking forward to this, us just making a connection um, to different countries uh, and you're hoping that in the future other countries can step their game up and we can get more things uh, connected uh, in Ghana to where we can, you know, make the move from Ghana to different countries. So that's been uh, my exploration of this um, 18 years of traveling to different countries, and it's been a, a great journey. And so moving forward, I uh, definitely want to make sure uh, we talk about the uh, schedule. So I'm going to start with screen sharing. And as you go to our website, uh, africaforafricans.org, always just try to encourage everyone to just uh, scroll down, whether you're on your a mobile device or your desktop or your laptop, and just click on the main menu or click on the links that we have here. And uh, we just came back from Liberia, Morocco, uh, tour March 29th to April 9th, um, which is country number 11 and uh, 12, and country number six in uh, West Africa, um, along with... Um, uh, Senegal, Gambia, Togo, Benin, and Ghana, and uh, second country in North Africa, uh, including uh, Egypt. And North Africa is just always interesting. Um, you know, uh, one of the things is a good part of North Africa is desert, but uh, you see this modern investment in construction and development and this tour tourism at its finest. And West Africa just represent, you know, an incredible group of tropical countries that um, we're looking to build and compete uh, with other parts of um, you know Africa, and show people more of just you know 
uh, which is the rich uh, cultural part of Africa. So you're, you're taking journeys around different part of Africa to just experience different feel and different uh, energy. And, uh, you know, and trust me, there's no place like uh, West Africa, um, you know, with its uh, struggle and um, you know, certain things. It's still the, the future of what we're looking to build in Africa. And that's why you see so many uh, tours and journeys to West Africa. That's half of my experience on the African continent. And the uh, other six countries are uh, one in Southern Africa, then East Africa, uh, Tanzania, Kenya, and uh, Ethiopia, and then North Africa, Morocco, and Egypt. So that's our uh, experience around. And um, you know, there's only so many countries uh, you can go to. So what we what we've figured out is just try to find the best of the countries uh, that we have experienced to to where you can go experience and just be open to traveling to different parts of Africa. And trust me, family, North, East, South, and West, completely different, unique experience. Like one of the most fascinating part of my experience traveling to Africa is Zanzibar Island in Tanzania. And it's not on a schedule, but uh, working to try to get it on a schedule outside of November. And um, we've been there four times with uh, Zanzibar Island, this incredible piece of tropical paradise in East, Af East Africa, where, you know, we just, you have all of your swimming, boating, um, you know, different kind of water sport experience. And from the history of the culture to ferry boats to internal flights to certain movements, uh, it's incredible. So, you know, you just find countries that, that stand out and you just try to build onto that energy. And on here, I, I do have exclusive uh, African safaris in Tanzania. So, there's certain parts of Tanzania where, unfortunately, we can't like use four days to do safaris in the Serengeti and Tanzania and, and Gorgor. But uh, so what is offered is a one day safari, same thing in Kenya and um, South Africa. And the reason for that is, um, you know, you know, based on feedback, most people say they're just not open to spend half a day journey just out, waking up different times of day just to see animals. So organize something simple but if a group of people um especially like four to six just want to experience something incredible uh there's unique um anywhere for, from four to six days and you're just out there in the elements and you know you can add on you can do it before you travel with us or after or you know we can work it in but uh, that's uh something i'm just uh directly working with as far as the, the group of people that we're working in tanzania and our professionals and they're very passionate about safaris and very passionate about going out. And, you know, maybe people like myself don't see it, but I'm, I wouldn't, you know, knock the hustle, but I just got to base all of our itineraries and schedule based on feedback and based on when you talk to every single individual that's traveling with you. And, and you know, it's not the, the, the highlight, but um, that's something I'm looking to develop to where, um, you know, they'll be able to just handle different kind of, um, you know, uh, safari we can just uh, get you fly you into Kilimanjaro and from there you can just enjoy you know excellent uh, just ventures out in nature right so next thing is um uh the Liberia Morocco journey that's represent our 18th year and then from there we have Ghana repatriation and investment tour so look into the set up a more unique uh investment tour um uh, presentation as far as this conference and also look into this showcase uh, two to three different dynamic aspects of um, living in a community and, and investing in a community to where we can have a nice foundation to where we can build on. Because as far as repatriation, as far as people who are looking to live, do business and invest in Africa, you know, we just have to just explain to people and explain to individuals and just everyone that's open to it that. There's different ways you can uh, take the approach, and the best approach that I've you know figured out is just a work and energy in union. Uh, as far as just making a move, not just going somewhere where you're the only individual person from wherever you are, and just no one else to connect with. Uh, that you know that that's an experience that some people are open to as far as they can handle it. But uh, for the most of us, uh, we just have to just literally just find a common energy and a common bond in this network and, you know, be able to just work with the people that we also have there in the country and the people who just know how, how certain things work because the culture of just business and how things work, uh, it would definitely just, you know, just overwhelm you. Uh, so 
you need a smoother process. So that's why we uh, showcase Black Star Pan African community, and we also showcase other different uh, African diaspora community. Not saying that uh, you can't just go somewhere and just live wherever you want. Uh, that's it's just not for everyone, and not everyone can just make that transition as quick and simple and easy. And some people just realistically are not ready. Uh, so that's one of the highlights, and those are things that uh, we showcase in this uh, movement to Ghana, and, and that's the only country that we have that kind of movement in, and that's because it's just, it was a part of the program that started it, and it's also uh, where we've been able to find, we can actually just access land and uh, just acquire land and just be able to build what we need to build and just work with the local community and the local chief and be able to build something to where you can literally just uh, build a future and to, and to where you just you know, don't have any limitations on, on building, you know, basically a black business paradise uh, for those of us in the diaspora, those of us uh, on the African continent, and just being able to build a special program and just uh, showcase what real pan-Africanism and showcase the, the energy of this us uh, building a future and networking and doing business back and forth from America. So... Uh, during the time in Ghana, um, this uh, 24 journey, you'll be able to just meet a lot of people that we have just known over over the years, and you'll just be able to visit some of them, stay, stay or just uh, be able to visit their business, and you'll be able to just enjoy different energy of and of just different people from the African diaspora living in a country like Ghana. Uh, you'll find people in you know, all the different countries, but the energy is uh, stronger in Ghana more than anywhere else you have seen. And so I've always just uh, just try to just um, explain to the rest of us that uh, it's it honestly uh, I've I've not seen it get any better than that. You know I've heard the, you know, the fictitious stories about the potentials of Liberia and the potential of, of other countries, uh, but uh, it's no no comparison. So we continue to just keep our office there at Black Star Pan African Community in Jahadzi. So. If, Anybody needs to live in a, live in that area, uh, live in our community, work with our, the people that we have there, or take a tour. Uh, we always have someone uh, there, and we always have activity there because we have people living in the community, and also we have an office there. Uh, so, uh, you know, this Ghana journey has become the foundation of this. How we can just, uh, basically set a foundation in Africa and kind of just build from there on, and not just uh, run all over the place. And you know, some people who have chosen chosen Tanzania. You know, I've not seen how good it has worked out, but um, I've you know I'm also based the statistics on those who have left our group in Ghana and went to Tanzania, and I've not seen how they have done any better. Uh, they have gotten blockades of uh, issues with uh, extended stay and our residents. That's one of the things that I can appreciate about Ghana. Uh, if you want that process of residency after you get your uh, visa. You can apply for residency one year, then two year, then multiple year, and eventually work towards citizenship. So, the good thing is there's a path to where you can just you know be able to be there to live and do business in the future. And I've not seen a country easier and smoother than that. And that's honestly the purpose of spending like almost two decades, uh, well, exactly two decades from 2004 to 2024, traveling the different parts of the African continent. But the good thing is uh, once we connected to Ghana, uh, you know, we started working that process. So. During the business conference, I always tell everybody just to open their minds and energy and think about what uh, the attorneys are talking about, the people, the lands commission, because they're telling you things that's going to save your life and save you from making bad decisions. And I know it's easy to forget all these things in a two hour period and just go out there and people sweet talk you with certain things. But uh, we're not trying to just keep you in a zone. We're just trying to just make sure that we all make the best decision because the worst thing is just when people complain about them, them being in a country. And But, you know, the, the reality of it is you come for tourism, it's one experience, which is always great, unless you go to certain countries that just are not prepared for tourism. Um, uh, but then living and doing business and investing in the country is a whole different story. So you tell everyone the first thing is don't floss or flash anything as if you just, you know, got it like that. And, and even if you do, that's... That's a situation where, you know, because, you know, the streets are talking while you're out there talking, people are listening. And you just have to just, you know, be humble and um, not telling you just to not, you know, not look a certain way and move a certain way. But uh, the better you can do that, the better you can fit into the culture of how business and things work and also not make yourself a target. Um, and also 
Now, before you move forward on anything, you know, we're here to consult with and then also the people that were at the business conference and also, you know, just you know, process many things and don't make any quick, sudden decision. Because especially when people tell you about land and about certain things, and it's like, you know, this, or example, this land, this land has been here for 10,000 years and, you know, and it, it, and it hasn't been, you know, taken or so on. And it's like, you know, don't let anyone push you into any urgency of doing anything. Come and just uh, check out the country, enjoy the, uh, the schedule and the itinerary, uh, which is incredible in Ghana. We go to a lot of historical and cultural places, and one of the places that's uh, always incredible and, and they've done a new modification to it is the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park. So, so definitely looking forward to that and looking forward to this, um, all the people we have connected over the period of time and and build new energy and new relationships and just work it from tour to tour. And again, family, if you want to see the full details of uh, these tour information, just click on the link and you'll get the full overview, itinerary, general terms, um, visa details. In this case, Ghana need a visa. And I uh, always recommend everyone just process their visa two to three months at a time. And then uh, we'll just, I'll help you as best as you need uh, over the phone and via email and via just uh, send you whatever information. But the most important thing is look at the Ghana visa uh, email that was sent to you. And it's similar to what's uh, on the uh, website. But if you, if you need the information resent to you, just reach out and then you know, we can give you access to it. And then uh, people of different nationalities, uh, if you're di from different parts of the Caribbean, uh, Ghana has a connection uh, to where you can fly visa-free. And the same thing with uh, Kenya. And let me see what else we have on there. Uh, yeah, I was going to say Tanzania, uh, which we have uh, you know, on, on the top. And we'll work on your schedule for it. And uh, beyond that, um, Brazil seems like no uh, visa right now. I got to just follow up with the extended process. And the same thing with South Africa. I just came back from there a few months ago and uh, no visa. So you're, you know, so these are also countries that uh, like you know, half of them is visas, half of them is no visa. But the visa process uh, for you know, the U.S. citizens as far as going to Kenya, Egypt, and Ghana is uh, you know, is uh, not bad, and they're all under a hundred dollars. And uh, in Ghana case, you get five years, so uh, the visa fee for Liberia was one hundred and sixty dollars. It's uh, which I have no idea, no understanding of why, yeah. And you know, but it's um one of those things where you know if you want people to come to your country, you may have to just compete with the rest of the countries. Because at the end of the day, you know, people are gonna look at all of these things. So. Like going to Togo and Benin visa one sixty is probably like two hundred dollars now, and you know you're there for three three days or so. Uh so when you look at the twelve countries I've been to Africa, a lot of decisions have been made to just keep what we have now uh, versus uh you know dealing with certain countries, and it's just a lot of little things that makes a difference. Uh so and then they you know you're also encouraging the people that run tourism in the different countries that you know they have to step their game up and compete with uh, the likes of uh. In Ghana, Egypt, South Africa, Kenya, and Tanzania, which uh, I feel that like those have been the five best experiences that we have had in Africa, and uh, you know countries that you know we see that are very serious that we can work with and connect with and enjoy an experience. And other countries, absolutely, you can uh, do the same as this uh, when you have a you know when you have a situation where you have to select. That's what uh, you have to do after eighteen years. So, family, as we continue, uh, the next journey after that is Egypt, and. Uh, the Egypt journey um, is the same flow of the journey. Um, yeah, we have, at this point, we have to just uh, change uh, you know, some flight schedules and move certain things around based on the Nile Valley cruise. And certain things that you seem that you have to deal with uh, every six months. Uh, so uh, that's the only thing that I have to give updates on as far as uh, Egypt. But beyond that, um, and I'll click on the uh, tour link. As soon as I get a chance, I'll move the different uh, details around for our Egypt journey, November 21st to December 2nd. So the same flow, same layout. Uh, instead of doing Cairo um, at the beginning, we do Cairo at the end, and the now cruise is at the beginning. Uh, but these are updates from our tour operator. So we're just going to update and make these changes. And then we, when we do our Egypt conference call, 
um, which we'll start doing some of these conference calls this uh, early once we get a nice our group size. Uh, we'll just go over the details. But uh, it's the uh, same uh, full uh, layout, uh, three nights in Cairo. Uh, luxury now crews are uh, three nights. And uh, Luxor is two nights. And her got uh, two nights. So uh, as far as Egypt, um, you're dealing with all of the historical aspects of Egypt. And uh, scroll back up. So in Cairo, um, you're dealing with uh, the Giza Plateau. And uh, you're dealing with the uh, new um, Egyptian museum uh, in uh, Cairo, which is closer to the Giza Plateau. So looking forward to, that's always the most uh, dynamic part, but uh, that will be towards uh, the end. So the best is safe for last. Uh, the Nile Valley uh, cruise, uh, this is a journey that you're gonna take from Aswan to uh, Luxor. So we're gonna be on a ship for uh, three nights. Uh, so that is a great experience. And the best thing about that experience is that uh, you'll be able to stop off to different uh, sites uh, where you literally, you it's a port right there by different tombs and different uh, temples and monuments. Uh, so looking forward to this, uh, get some updated videos of this uh, Egypt. The last update video we have is literally 20 years ago, back in the young days. Now, as far as um, as far as uh, Luxor, uh, you're looking at uh, this a whole list of uh, temples. Uh, so... Definitely want to make sure everybody's ready for those dates. Uh, get your cameras, everything uh, ready. And uh, you just, Egypt just give you a history of this incredible ancient and just uh, modern day civilization. And as we talk about modern day, um, uh, these are also great resorts that we're staying at. So while you're just out um, in the elements, uh, you know, you'll be able to just come back and relax. And one of the, the finest setup that we have is this beautiful two days in Urgata at a water park. So You'll be able to enjoy um, history, modern times, and um, also this uh, paradise and this relaxation. Uh, so those those are some of the things that uh, we have uh, highlighted. All right, then the next journey that we have is uh, just basically a replicate of our uh, last journey a few months ago to uh, South Africa. And this is uh, an incredible schedule and the Cape Town part is just perfect for the new year and uh, days are just laid out. And I would love to just uh, go to the itinerary, the full day-to-day, -day, but they definitely always recommend everyone to go to the full day-to-day -day itinerary. And this is actually a uh, old picture of myself there in South Africa. I know that was definitely in 2005, but forget if it was July or November, uh, more than likely uh, November. Uh, so this show history of just us. But as far as the uh, Johannesburg uh, schedule, and uh, this time around uh, versus November in 2019, the Johannesburg schedule was uh, it was a little rainy and chilly, but uh, we definitely uh, worked it out. Uh, I would never understand the weather in South Africa. And I went in July, November, and also, um, I should say, May, November, and December. And I can see why certain people love the weather. It's um, it's more on the cooler side. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, the five nights that we're in uh, Johannesburg, um, and the setup start from this, that direct Delta flight to Johannesburg. So that is one of those long flights, uh, but it's direct on Delta Airlines. You have your comfort. And uh, once you get there, you're just there. And you just get settled in a hotel, which is usually about 30 minutes away. And we're staying at a nice uh, Marriott hotel in the tropical suburbs. Uh, we be able to just enjoy the peace and beautiful energy of South Africa. And um, just want to make sure we're not in the city and we just, you know, where you just, where certain things are not maintained. But the reality of it is outside of Johannesburg is where all of the, this, the development and the investment and the beauty of this been transpired. So the city is a little rough, even though you will be able to see part of the city. But when you're ready to walk to the mall and walk to certain places, uh, you'll enjoy this uh, 
neighborhood in uh, Johannesburg, uh, Wanderers. Uh, so the, we always uh, set it off with the Lasetti Cultural Village that takes you back into ancient mankind, uh, ancient times, where you could just get a beautiful presentation of all of the cultural, historical villages of South Africa. And uh, it's full, uh, it's um, a good time. And the last uh, set of videos we have in South Africa, and then you'll be able to see like literally all of the footage. Uh, and uh, a Soweto uh, journey take you to Mandela House, Hector Peterson Memorial, also the Apartheid Museum. And uh, during, the, you know, during that same, um, you know, same two, three days of just doing tours in uh, Johannesburg, uh, Constitutional Hill, um, we just be able to, which is now a courthouse, you'll be able to just get a whole lot of this, this uh, feel for this, uh, this a whole lot of things that were just more, uh, you know, informed about as far as just a struggle in South Africa and, you know, from Nelson Mandela to this other people and other this um, freedom fighters that have just came through that uh, whole movement. So the South Africa journey is just a mix of this, you know, as other ones is paradise, uh, history, culture, and it's also just the struggle of just us as a people. Uh, Palanensburg is the last uh, tour date that we have. And uh, for those who are, you know, looking forward to this experience in Africa and just going out on a safari, uh, uh, number one, the drive is a little bit uh, over two hours, um, but uh, we just leave out a little early in the morning and then we just have three full hours. We have our own private safari vehicle and you'll see the videos. Those are some of the videos you'll see in South Africa. And then literally just a whole lot of different uh, animals and just a different feel and energy and just us showing our excitement and just you know, enjoying it. And for, after three hours, you know, that's uh, good enough for us. Uh, but for those who ever want to stay longer and just... Uh, enjoy some of the other safaris, we can just always hook you up with that and you can stay back longer or get there early and enjoy that uh, journey for anywhere from three to five nights. Uh, but that's a great in introduction. And then uh, the next uh, four days, we're gonna proceed to uh, Cape Town. So we'll leave from Johannesburg Airport on South African Airways on the way to uh, Cape Town. And when we actually leave in Cape Town, we'll, uh, Delta Airlines flight will be waiting for us and we'll fly directly from Cape Town directly to Johannesburg. So that is one of the best uh, flight schedule because that's literally three flights. And that's just, you know, you're staying in two different hotels in two different locations where you're not moving around. Um, and that's what I've learned from my last journey. Uh, it was just, you know, four hotels in, you know, nine days. And, you know, the good thing of it, you know, on the positive side, you're able to see more and experience more. Um, uh, but at the same time, too, uh, sometimes, you know, you just want to just have those uh, free days off with no scheduling, not moving. So that's uh, the benefit of this journey. And while you're on the uh, waterfront, because uh, uh, we're right in the waterfront for our December journey, uh, during the free days, um, you'll be able to just, it's two tour days and two free days. So uh, it's one, uh, you know, so you're not, you know, so there's no back to back. So you'll be able to just, uh, I feel, be, uh, be able to do more. And this is based on the experience of our last schedule, was, uh, which was great. But uh, there are certain things that during the holiday times is you just not uh, clear with. We eventually adjusted it to the schedule that we have. Uh, but uh, now that we know, we know that then that information is already up. So you'll be able to just uh, enjoy the waterfront, which is just a uh, fascinating, just this incredible place of where you just have so much going on. And then, the view that you see right now is literally the view you see the Table Mountain, which we'll do to you. Now we'll, we'll do the uh, cable cars. So hopefully nobody is scared of heights. Uh, but that is uh, you know, going to Brazil and going to um, Cape Town, going to Rio de Janeiro and uh, Cape Town. Mm -hmm. uh, we do the cable cars. It's you know, you know, it's one of those things. Some people who are maybe scared of heights may just just you know feel a certain way about it. But uh, trust me. If you're not interested in going, we're not going to force you, but it's the greatest experience ever. And, um, and you know, and fortunately, every time I've experienced these things, you know, just make sure I have the camera or the phone or something, and we're just recording and sharing. So all of these things are up there. And when you're just up so far, it's just incredible to view. And these are also the next set of videos that I have for uh, uh, Cape Town. I've uploaded all of the uh, Johannesburg video on YouTube. And it's just... Uh, Fortunately or unfortunately, it's a lot of videos, so you, know, you can't just uh, upload them all. But uh, over the period of time, I just have all these playlists ready. So I'll uh, put more up for um, Johannesburg and more up for um, uh, Dar es Salaam, um, uh, Tanzania.
and also Liberia uh, and uh, Casablanca, Morocco. So those are videos that are up and uh, we just have so much uh, that I'll be adding it, but you're gonna love the Cape Town videos, this experience in this uh, area and just being able to see this incredible footage from uh, the screen. And uh, during our time in Cape Town, it's kind of a mix of this uh, tropical paradise and beauty to extreme poverty and this uh, struggle. So we, we're going to take you into the township and also take you around uh, district number six, where you'll see just weird setups of just extreme riches and extreme uh, poverty, like, you know, as soon as you turn left and right. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, it's a uh, part of the journeys that we have. We just try to show you a balanced experience of uh, everything in the country and not just show you tourism paradise uh, but definitely want to make sure that uh, everyone is comfortable in their lodging and transportation which is what i push for the tour guides to make sure that we have buses that air condition flows and things like that and you know i don't want to be telling people well this is africa some things work and some things don't work which it depends on what part of africa and what type of african experience you want people to experience but uh, that's where we are right now where uh, we just want people to just be extremely comfortable and uh, we know we don't need to force people in certain experience we can do a day trip where you see certain things but get back on your bus and enjoy your hotel and just enjoy your peace and also enjoy a beautiful nightlife uh dining and so on um and that's you know that's uh the flow you know we all work hard for our vacation our getaway and we want to just make it more in that field versus more of a place where you just run around and you just seeing certain things so these are things that I've learned uh, and I've you know, looked at it myself and, you know, my son is with me and we just evaluate of, you know, what we see and you know, get feedback. And, you know, you know South Africa is, uh, you know, outside of this, uh, the the things that you're going to see outside, of, it's just a special place to just, just really just have it going uh, to make sure that you have a fun fill and historical country. Uh, historical uh cultural journey but also this a great experience and uh, being a country where you can just uh, you're not limited and things like that the last thing I, we want you to do is like go to the AT machines and there's you know there's no money in the bank and go somewhere where the lights are off and things like that and I got stories about uh, you know different countries out of the 12 countries that have what it has and things like that and what are those journeys uh, exciting and things absolutely um it's just great to just experience life and experience situations you can't always just have the best way you just going from a so-called perfect developed world to another perfect developed world and things like that so always let the people know that you know we appreciate the experience and things like that and you know we'll you know i'm sure we'll continue to have some of those experience here and there uh, but as far as that's what i really want to share uh directly to the point family is this i want to share with you the best of africa and the best of the experience that uh, we love and cherish the most and encourage more people to and you know, go there and encourage other countries that may not make lists anymore to just step their game up and so on. So as we proceed, uh, let me uh, move to the next uh, country, which is which is actually Kenya. Definitely want to apologize for the Kenya schedule. Um, but before I start clicking, I'm just gonna because there's only two articles there, which is itinerary and the English to Kiswahili language trans translation. So the Kenya journey uh, is set for April 4th to the 14th and uh, just uh, to just make a conscious decision because I've been trying to get Kenya and Ethiopia on the schedule and uh, I decided to compare the options of uh, redoing a Liberia and Morocco journey, which is not, was never going to happen. Um, and then Senegal and Gambia, which is a nice uh, country to go to, uh, but uh, that's three countries in West Africa and looking to flow the balance of our experience but i feel people uh, will just love kenya and i love that experience and you know i would love to just uh, make this journey out uh, in uh, tanzania but um, instead of us going to zanzibar island uh, we'll actually be in uh, mombasa which is one of those countries that um, you know while we we're in uh, nairobi never got a chance to go to uh, so we'll be able to spend three beautiful nights there in mombasa on an incredible resort um, i did have it uh, up it's actually up on that itinerary and uh, be able to add in a tour day, but also add in th the things that we like to do in Zanzibar Island now, which is great dining, water sport, and this and enjoying this the tropical piece of the country. And then um yeah, we we'll, you know our focus to be in Nairobi, so from the safari to this uh the different uh, uh historical and cultural places uh, we'll be able to go to and then 
just be able to enjoy fascinating uh, nightlife. So I want to say it's similar to um, uh, Tanzania, but at the same time to just have its own feel. And, uh, you know, we're going to be flying on Delta and Kenya Airways. And yeah, I just, I love Kenya Airways operation. Uh, you know, last time we were leaving from Tanzania to Kenya and um, the KL, the Delta KLM setup, uh, which is part of their uh, Sky team, uh, uh, set the flights up uh, and Kenya Airways to New York and then uh, Delta Airlines from uh, New York to um, uh, Atlanta. Uh, so that's also the same situation that we will have uh, going to uh, Kenya. And uh, it's, we get us there, number one, earlier and um, yeah, and so on. So looking at different uh, flight schedule and different uh, experience, but uh, the April date is just, um, just a nice tropical ideal date. And for those who want to just learn more Kiswahili, um, you know, Kenya, Tanzania, um, those are the countries. Um, Uganda is also another country and it'd be ideal if we could just go to like three or four countries or two or three countries uh, but the issue with that is uh, too much movement and then you just uh, limit yourself from uh, getting access to other parts of the country example when I went to Kenya the last time it was just doing like Senegal, South Africa and Kenya so when we got to Kenya it was just Nairobi instead of Nairobi or Mombasa or another part um, and then South Africa I want to say it was only uh, Johannesburg and then Senegal, uh, uh, Dakar. So yes, uh, it's uh, you know, a good experience, but um, you miss out on other parts of the country. So what you see now is this uh, standalone journey. And then the next one now we have is uh, Ghana journey, May 2025. So it's uh, literally similar itinerary um, to where we have, where it's, if there are certain changes, uh, we'll make it. But um, the the feedback and the experience on the itinerary we have has been incredible. The only diff only thing I'll say is, for those looking to uh, journey with us to uh, Ghana, um, I'll definitely recommend if you want to see more and experience experience more, definitely stay back longer because you do have access to go to the northern part of the country and we've been as far as west and east and as far as in the middle of the country, but. At the end of the day, you do have to just finalize a program that is going to balance out the experience. And ultimately, which is the same thing I've learned from uh, the Liberia journey, which I've learned from uh, other Ghana journeys when we are doing ridiculous drives, like seven hours up into the country, which is not bad because we're game for it. And, you know, you're, you're, you're experiencing different parts of the country. Uh, but just to slow things down, you, uh, all itineraries uh, have been adjusted to where it's just not consistent moving and running all over the place and things like that, which you you literally appreciate. And I hope we, we don't um, just set, any, set anybody back from doing that. But uh, at the same time, too, when you're looking in the bus and we're all asleep out, and then we, you know, I appreciate everyone because we just make the best of it. It's like uh, we'll just sleep on the bus and enjoy the experience and things like that. But, uh, and you know, it, it, and it's, it's a journey, so it's not uh, tourism. Uh, it's not, not tourism. It's not like a vacation, but at the same time, to trying to add more vacation, more free days, more relaxed schedule in it, uh, and slow things uh, down. Um, so that's just you know, decisions you have to just make um, over a period of time um, to this. And then um, also, this, the only people that you're willing to work with is just basically this established professionals who understand the game and things like that. Uh, you're always open for training and things like that. But at this day and age, you know, training session is open either. We, you know, uh, the people that you're working with to step the game up or just other people more established who just take the route and the opportunity. And it's what you have to deal with uh, because you're looking for better customer service, better uh, support, better operation, and better just, you know, you don't want to tell everyone that you're working with in the country what to do. And things like that. Do you spend enough time doing that uh, before you get to the country? Uh, so uh, there we go, uh, family. Uh, and other things on the um, the uh, Ghana uh, schedule uh, or information is improving your immune system, language translation, and all of the tour schedule. And I uh, update this for Kenya also is the departure reminder list. And uh, that would just give you this 30 points of this being prepared, being ready things you need to know before you depart, reminders, and also just um, things that you just may need to get before you, you know, travel. Uh, so that's um, all of the uh, schedule. And the uh, last one I have on the uh, itinerary is uh, Brazil, Woodson Culture Journey.
and um, enough people have reached out. So there we go. And if nothing else, you know, we just replace it with Tanzania. But uh, do you know want to see more of us uh, join us in Brazil, uh, Rio de Janeiro, and Salvador Bahia? So you're looking at uh, four days in each place, and looking at two tour days, and looking at this uh, incredible schedule, which which includes this a uh, day where we just we just jamming on the beach of Epanema, which is in uh, Rio de Janeiro, and from the real estate, this. Um, it's still to this day the mo most incredible place I've seen. Uh, this, as far as this extreme, this uh, beauty, this Rio de Janeiro. And if Cape Town didn't have some of its this mess, I would say uh, Cape Town also. But <clears throat> it's literally just an incredible place to where. You know, where it's just, it seemed like a beach day every day in Brazil. And it just seemed like people just out working out and just enjoying beach. And it's just like a different culture and energy. And then from the night scene, the party scene, to this, the circle places, to this, this all elements of this parks everywhere, people playing soccer. Um, and it just, you know, Brazil was the basically the only place that's outside of this Africa that was just interested at connect you with the, uh, the true African roots as far as festival is circle places that are still there. And places that uh, uh, illustrate a story, uh, illustrate a history of just uh, stolen Africans being brought to Brazil. Uh, so that's how uh, Brazil uh, <laughs> found its way on uh, Africa for Africans uh, schedule and uh, not limiting myself to uh, different Caribbean islands. You know, people always tell me go to different places. Uh, but, you know, that's what uh, we specialize in. That's um, you know, roots and culture connection um, um, as far as this uh, Africa. Uh, so family, moving forward, let me just click on the uh, YouTube page. So once you're on the, um, and then everyone, if you have questions, let's open up yourself. So YouTube page is this um, you know, 2007 to now, this um, the last 17 years of sharing videos, uh, just going from the VHS to the uh, DVD, which I have right there behind me on the library, to this uh, creating more of this digital content uh, to where... Anyone can uh, access uh, this, this free and accessible, um, minus uh, whatever commercials they load up the uh, video with. So my intro is this, um, this, uh, this point, uh, the 10 countries um, you know, across uh, at that point, uh, 33 journeys across Africa, including uh, uh, Brazil, and they're showing group photos and this uh, telling a story of this, our movement, our connection on this, uh, trying to build more connection, more, more energy in us. Uh, connecting with Africa and just kind of learning the game and learning the system and learning how things uh, work and just building connection and business and just kind of keeping a connection uh, with the African continent, the African diaspora. So when you scroll down, um, uh, first of all, you have uh, videos which will just uh, load up 4,200 videos like realistically and the shorts, um, you know, they're a little provocative, but this is club life and it seems like any short that I have, it's just always a video of just us somewhere enjoying nightlife uh, because I just ended up shooting the videos um, uh, portrait uh, instead of uh, landscape. Uh, live videos, um, I don't do a bunch of uh, live videos, but I'm gonna be working on new live video schedule and we'll work on that as best as possible. But I have a history of uh, live videos. Uh, some are entertaining, some are funny, but uh, there's some of them are long, some are short, but um, uh, that's it for me on uh, live videos as we are moving to more, you know, uh, developing our community and more just uh, the sharing uh, tips um, and this process of how we can work together to invest and make living, doing business in Africa a reality and how we can make whatever business connection that we work in America. So a lot of those things are coming. The playlist is just a ridiculous amount of playlists. Um, a lot of them are Ghana playlists, uh, but then you have all of the playlists for every single country that uh, we've traveled to in the last uh, seven years. And the playlist that shows you this, any kind of video from this, um, myself at the airport or driving to the airport, uh, saying whatever we say in this, talking and sharing information and just, just being our real self and just, uh, just showing people this, uh, our authentic energy of just what we're looking to do and what we're doing. Uh, and as time go along in the videos, you see more tour guides talking, more movements, but you basically just see and and get a feel of this, you know, 
all the things that we do because all tour videos uh, with us on site and uh, tour sites and going to somewhere is circle. All of them are recorded. And uh, sometimes we have multiple recording. All right, so this uh, last set of videos, I guess uh, YouTube just select some videos, but this is me at the uh, Labasa Lodge in Marshall in uh, Liberia. And me just, just being somewhere new and just recording videos. It's like, I'm, it's just, I got this literally um, at four o'clock in the morning. And I don't know, for some reason I didn't sleep, but I was just up and I was just, I don't know, I was just possessed or something, but I was just doing videos of everything. Um, but it's just the, the natural flow of when you just go somewhere new or just when you go somewhere, you just you just can't believe you're just somewhere in paradise and tropics and you're just away from the normal rat race. Yeah, uh, true presentation. Uh, go ahead, uh, uh, JC. Uh, some, did someone have a uh, question? And also, family, if you give me a minute, I'll just, um, once I finish this, I'll just uh, go to the, I'll go to um, um, open for questions. Uh, but this is a Labasa Lodge. And, um, and as I mentioned to you, I was just like possessed with like certain energy. And uh, so, but some of these videos I feel are, are great. And then once we started to get things going, we started swimming. And I think this actually, uh, this is, uh, once you click on video, you'll see the process of these videos right here. Uh, so, these videos show us this, um, this, you know, taking a canoe ride and just us in the boat uh, talking. Uh, so a lot of times, it, and then this is my favorite one, right? The lovebird nest suite at La Bassa Lodge. So um, gave this to one of our uh, very deserving, hardworking uh, tour member that helped us plan the journey out, my brother, Kala Genesis. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that he just enjoyed the paradise that he just welcomed us to. And so that was a part of it. And then this us swimming. Uh, but the playlist right now does have 25 videos of, Possibly about 150 videos of just the, the country itself. Uh, but uh, most of the videos at the beginning is this uh, our introduction at the airports in Casablanca in uh, New York after the journey and set the tone. And then South Africa, uh, the first half of the videos, um, which is uh, 93, that's majority of those videos are in um, Johannesburg or, you know, during the time where we were around Johannesburg and in Tanzania, 67 videos. Uh, more to upload in uh, Ghana, May, June. Those are that's the those are all the videos, 190, and and then so on. And you scroll down, you have more playlists, and you can just check out um, the videos and you know, just give you a feel. And you'll see how everyone dress, how everyone move, and it's just all of them has just been a uh, different uh, experience. Uh, but definitely looking to um, load up some more of uh, Liberia videos and also add some more photos. And these are our conference calls in the uh, past. So almost every month, well, every month, I just have a different uh, conference call video. And we're just talking about the process and uh, tours that we do in this uh, sharing information and this, you know, this uh, her natural self, this recording videos and this you know, sharing information. So it's like information only and lots of uh, different um, videos um, here. If some interest in, and some are adventurous and, this is the long list. Oops, I don't need to have this person information up here. Excuse me. All right, that's Facebook for you. There's a whole lot of uh, albums and just having a hard time keeping up with the photos that needs to be uploaded, but I uh, promise I will catch up. Um, and it's sometimes hard to delete certain photos, but the good thing is we usually get them all uploaded and then gonna gonna work on putting more on Instagram on uh and Twitter. And showcase all that 18 years of experience and the same thing on the uh, website, uh show more of these uh group pictures and change uh photos. And that's the newsletter that we just share with everyone and always just uh, encourage everyone to check out the schedule. And that's our last group photos. So very bright and vibrant in colors. Uh, so, so family, let me uh, stop uh, screen sharing. And yes, family, uh, greetings are uh, Teresa. As a matter of fact, greetings, talking about Liberia and getting all the videos uploaded and just reminiscing I hope you enjoyed yourself at La Bassa Lodge. Uh, that was like the best part of the journey, just 
getting to somewhere in paradise. How are you? Yes, peace and blessings. It was well. All went well. So you got a t-shirt in the background. So <laughs> you, we're going to Kenya. So, uh, yes, uh, uh, Kenyan has been, been literally just working on the schedule and just working on those details because I had to just um, make some adjustment. Uh, but yes, uh, looking to go to Kenya, it's been it's been 19 years and I feel bad at others, you know, I let other schedule beat it out. But it's one of my favorite places in Africa, you know, probably top three in Africa, Kenya. Uh, so, yeah, Kenya and Brazil. So I said, ah, <laughs> let me listen to what you got to say. <laughs> Yes, I know. Peace people. and blessings, all is well. Uh yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, you know, I always appreciate your positive energy, and um, and I think that's what we have to do, no matter what. Uh, because you've been on many journeys with me. We've been on uh, my my favorite, which is uh, Ghana, Togo, Benin. Um, uh, literally November twenty seventeen, and I'm, I'm being honest with everybody. It I don't was know wonderful. Kind of, I don't know what kind of spirit I was possessed with, but. I have no idea how we pull off the schedule and all the moving around. It was like but we did. It we was did. I mean, we, we were there. Around. We conquered. It's we all good. And it was just uh, amazing. But uh, would I ever do that again? Uh, it's uh, you know you appreciate the experience, uh, but it's just uh, it's too much movements uh, and things like that. And uh, this, um, but uh, Togan Benin sound like a great idea for those who are open to it in the future and uh, give us a chance to experience more of, uh, especially Togo. I feel like. A lot of times we do these multiple journeys. We don't do as much in Togo. Uh, but but yeah, that was a part of our movement, just like we did uh, Liberia and Morocco family. I'm telling you, it does, It shows your logistics experience on organizing certain things. Uh, and it's it, and, and it's talent that you don't want to always keep on using uh, because you want to enjoy some of these. But uh, that's uh, there's four hotels on, on that journey. And uh, fortunate and unfortunate, uh, Morocco have a long layover, so we had a chance to experience a new country, which was great because uh, Teresa remember us driving around Morocco, and and realistically, uh, when you're in Morocco um, or I should say Casablanca, you may wonder where you are, uh, but you're still telling people it's North Africa, it maybe the very peak of Africa, but it's uh, in North yes, Africa. Yes, it's North Africa. They had the same weather that we had in New York, <laughs> so it was cold, but it was a beautiful place. Um I, I enjoyed Morocco. Have you ever seen the sequence of the organization of the the the, the city itself? Um, you literally saw professional uh, people on the street with uh, trash, like you know, like if they were just working at the airport in a professional uniform. And yes, they they Morocco seemed to be very well organized. They seemed to have a very well infrastructure. They the streets were clean. They had public transportation. It seemed like things were going well. Yeah, it, it's, it inspired you. And that's one of the things um, I thought that, you know, once we um, experienced the journey going um, from um, uh, you know Casablanca to uh, Liberia and then coming back, we'll be able to just see things in a perspective where it's, you know, it's more encouraging because I don't ever want to take anyone to certain countries in Africa where, you know, where they see just one set of things, you know, yeah, that's what I like about taking, uh, you know, even when we did, uh, you know, the uh, Ghana, Togo, Benin, showing the highlight of uh, countries like uh, Ghana and uh, Benin. So that was uh, that experience, our family. So, um, and then also, you know, what we learned in uh, in Morocco is how the country is managed and how the government works. Uh, because one of the realistic things is, you don't, you know, I know I'm just used to going to West Africa, but it's like you don't want anyone to feed you. It's like, oh, this is Africa, this is Africa, and as you tell them. I do respect and I understand that I'm not imposing anything, you know. But it's like you're you're open to eventually uh, not hearing all the reasons and excuses why West Africa is so different from other parts of Africa. So that was one of the good experiences that we had, being able to see different um, countries and then seeing how different countries run based on ministry of tourism and government. So that was one of the profound uh, experience. Would I do it again? Absolutely not. But it was a great experience. Um, um, and just because uh, I have other countries that we just really need to get back to, like Kenya and Ethiopia, um, uh, which um, is something going on in East Africa where uh, they just stepped their game up on all the countries I've named in East Africa, uh, working with their own, have their own airlines, and they just do an incredible development uh, in the country. So I'm, uh, I'm sharing this energy also to, you know, to all our beloved people and governments uh, in West Africa and let them know, hey, you know, we love West Africa, but let's uh, work together to compete with every other parts of Africa and, um, you know, and compete. 
more and more. All right, so, uh, but any uh, way also, Teresa, I wonder if you have anything else to share with everyone and encourage everyone to just open their minds to the experience of Africa because, uh, you know, things are not always going to be the same as where we're coming from. I definitely encourage everybody to take a trip to Africa. East Africa, West Africa, North Africa, South Africa. They, they need to have that experience because I think they will have a different opinion of where they live and a different opinion of the world at large. Absolutely, family. And we're always going to make sure we put the best uh, itinerary together for you, but it's uh, up to you just to uh, be positive and uh, don't let anything just throw you off your game. And just, um, you know, we're, we're available, our crew, uh, tour crew and staff, and we usually have additional people uh, to help you with any move uh, move around. Just like when we were in Liberia, we had uh, a lot more people than we ever had. Uh, but uh, we, the good thing is uh, we had people that were helpful, uh, especially to different individuals to do things. Uh, so that's the kind of energy we also uh, look to bring more and more. And on that note, just want to open things for questions for anyone else who want to have that have any questions about any of the journeys that we've talked about. Um, uh, so we can just answer any questions and give any uh, updates. Yes, family, uh, we are live here and getting ready to head to uh, Ghana. Egypt and South Africa for the remainder of 2024 after coming back from another journey of a lifetime in uh, Liberia and Morocco. And uh, so just been uploading videos and just want to share more of that experience because as uh, our experience in Africa. All right, uh, Shirley, I see your mute button is off. You have a question? All right, so um, if you have any questions, just uh, unmute yourself and uh, guide with your question. And um, just sharing with you, uh, once again, our last two our journeys to uh, Africa. Say, so Shirley, your mute button. All right, there you go, um, uh, JC, the mute button is on. Oh, okay. Uh, you have a question? Uh, you want uh, you you to share? Well, when you spoke about the Brazil trip, now, is that the cable car going up to the Christ of Redeemer? Or is that a cable car ride exploring the city of, um, really, of Rio? Not uh yes uh it's two different things so the um the christ the redeemer statue it just give you this uh this a this a nice uh view uh you know from up there in the statue to see the see the par panoramic view of our rio de janeiro now the cable cars does the same thing also on the other side of our rio de janeiro but you're just going you're basically taking a cable car from one mountain to the next mountain to another mountain and it is fascinating <laughs> oh, goodness. okay and you're up in elevation, you can't believe. And I just hope nobody does have any negative energy in themselves saying, what if these cars flat fall out the sky? Uh, it's, an <laughs> it's an engineering marvel for those who are looking to travel to uh, you know, Rio de Janeiro with us and uh, Cape Town, South Africa. Um, you know, you're paying for it. You're paying for it, uh, the entrance anyway. So might as well come on it and and uh, take the venture. Uh, and it's, it's I'm, I can't wait to even put the latest set of videos up. So you, okay. you don't look excited. <laughs> I'm very excited, but where is the cable cars going in Cape Town, South Africa? Uh, in uh, South Africa, it's uh, once you, once we are uh, driving uh, elevation to uh, Table Mountain, we're gonna get to the part where it's a big um, mountain ent mountain entrance, and then they have the cable car that goes from the uh, mountain entrance all the way up to uh, the main uh, mountain, and it's just uh, one uh, journey and back uh, in. Um, in uh, Rio de Janeiro, it's uh, it's from one from the base to one mountain, and then from one mountain to another mountain. So you're going up even further in elevation. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, yes, yeah, so that's uh, the, the difference. Uh, the one in um, the one in our you know Rio de Janeiro just it's um it's a little it's um it's it's a little bit more as far as just the time and experience. Uh, but it's I don't know which one is uh, higher in elevation, but um, you you just up there. And the one in South Africa, the thing of it, it spins. So while you're spinning, you're you know there's an open section, so you just have to make sure you don't drop anything. So we always have to go through safety procedures and everything and make sure everybody just stay to the windows so they can get a chance to see out and view everything. So definitely looking to share. And even on the um the Brazil journey that we have on the uh, playlist for, for uh for 2017, uh July 2017, uh we have those videos of the cable car and it's lots of those videos. It's a great experience. Okay. And, uh, I, I heard you say something about Togo. So uh, when it's is been a long time since we've been to Togo. Now, I always just um, feel like we never spend enough time in Togo, even though we you know, feel like it's not much to do there. But it's a you know it's a small, beautiful country now. In um, West Africa, it's just you know things like visa fees are ridiculous, um, and things like that for just a short stay. Um, oh. and, um it's you know Ghana's the main country there since uh, you don't have a, and Ghana stands out more than both countries uh, together. But it's it was just nice to experience different countries. So that was the only three country that we did in the past, and the other multi country is um beyond uh, Liberia, Morocco is uh, Senegal and the Gambia, which we have done a few times, and then. Uh, but all of them is just movements. Uh, but the greatest thing about movements, you're just experiencing a lot more uh, in different places. Uh, where is this uh, last set of videos? So on the playlist that we have down here, let's actually up a little bit. These are previous uh, tours too. <clears throat> on the multiple playlists, once you scroll down from the main page on YouTube, you see a South Africa, November 2019, and also you see a Brazil, July 2019. So those are some of the older videos that you see of the cable cars in both places. And let me just click on one of these videos. Okay. So when will you be going to um, South Africa again? Uh, this uh, December this year. As, and after this year? And we're live on Revolutionary Camp. I'm in Rio. Rio de Janeiro. Mm -hmm. I done. I'm just thinking about cable cars and even this one video, I'm sure it's coming up soon. I see it. Oh, these places. Uh, like a cable car video. Okay. Oh, Sugarloaf Mountain, second largest. All right. All right. Going to station tomorrow by Orca. Mm -hmm. Yes, so family, this is where we're going to be descending on a cable car. Uh, right here, family. Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah, just going back, a lot of times I look back at it and like, wow, that's, you know, because sometimes it amazes yourself. Uh, but that's why you record everything to just even remind yourself that. You just this uh, the the rest of the world is out there and you know let's not stay stationary in America, uh. But I just I just love Brazil. It's just um it is different from anywhere else in the rest of the world. But what you're looking at from this point all the way all Rio de Janeiro and we're giving you the highest view of at Sugarloaf Mountain. Very interesting. Then it look like toy uh cables. <laughs> uh huh. The cables look very thin, but you know it's an nice. engineer genius. The tourist sites and you're gonna see everybody but us. <laughs> yeah. On the names inside and all kind of information on here. I know everybody like who who's this dark skinned guy recording everything? <laughs> Two most popular tourist attraction in Brazil. Wow. Okay. okay. This family said so this uh quick share. Um uh lots of those videos are right there in the playlist. Uh you know, you can take your time, watch them. Uh uh they're all they're available to share, and it's just our experience with sharing. 
and it's uh fascinating um even some of the videos i'm about i'm uploading to liberia it's just um great experience of this um us this and it seemed like every country is just uniquely different but uh yes family mm -hmm. the uh line is open for anyone to have any questions uh or want to dialogue about anything um yeah because right i have now, a question sure go ahead yes um back to the uh, to the ghana uh trip more, um you yeah. You had mentioned uh, staying behind uh, if we wanted to. How how would one go about doing that? Uh, just um, you just uh, let me know ahead of time, um, a few months ahead of time, and we just work it out with the airlines where we just have them just uh, do a return ticket for you, maybe a few days later or however long you want to stay. So it's a uh, it's a simple process, and usually we'll just reach out ahead of time. And uh, you know, let you know if you if you're looking to do that, let us know so we can go ahead and change it this week or next week, uh, or next month. Uh, so you have a heads up on it, and and then you know everyone who knows ahead of time, they can always give us ahead of time, and we just put it on the notes. Okay, all right, because this is the we're talking about the 2025. Uh yes, sir, uh, 2025. Uh, I hope yeah. you're ready for that journey because. Uh, before now, it comes around quick, and the good thing of it is whatever I record here in Ghana is a, similar to what we experienced just like uh, last year, so you can always check out what we're doing and things like that. Uh, maybe it'll get you more prepared. Some people are open to it. Some people don't want to see any of the, that information because they want to just be surprised, but I don't like surprise, so I like to see what I'm working with. Yeah, and what would, what would be the time frame you would suggest to stay behind, like a couple more uh, days? I would say about uh, three, four days, and you can just about relax a little bit more and maybe just do some extra shopping or maybe just make one or two extra visits. And then um, if you're just looking to go to other parts of the um, the African continent, maybe a week, you know, you just get a flight from, yeah. you get a flight from Accra to, um, example, get a country, um, uh, Dakar, Senegal, and then... You know, we either you know we either get you back and then you just get another flight back to Ghana, or we just work it out to where we can have you departing from uh, Dakar, Senegal. So it's just something where if you want to stay, you just let us know exactly what you want to do, and then uh, we'll be able to just work out a game plan. That way, you just you have a better experience, and you can you know you can have a more I know more balanced experience uh, by just seeing things a little different outside the lens of this a tourist yeah. bus and a tour guide that's taking you around. And things like that. Okay. Yeah. We 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 were thinking about staying a few extra days for that 2025 trip, but stay, still in Ghana, but just a couple of extra days thinking about it. Yeah. All right, perfect. And then uh, we have the hotel route you can use, and then also you you can just open yourself open yourself to different um options as far as um this uh, staying back. Some people may choose some some level of extended stay somewhere else. Okay. Okay, thank you. Oh, do you ever see your see foresee visiting uh Cameroon? <laughs> Cameroon. I try not to just uh, limit myself, but um, it's uh, it's not hit the the radar. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, the only reason because we're limited on schedule. Yeah, I gotcha. Okay. Thank. Expand and I get some people we can trust to do some serious business uh with us, uh, but. Uh, so yeah, um, yeah, definitely open to um, traveling to many other parts of Africa. Um, since uh, twelve countries is a limitation of about twenty to twenty five percent of the African continent, um, and uh, but uh, definitely trying to list um, countries that may be interested with, uh, with you know, with somewhere where we can build a tour program that um, illustrates the roots and the uh, roots roots and culture. Um, uh, nightlife shopping, uh, networking, and just uh, being in a tropical um, uh, environment. Um, so it's, um, you never know, because um, I was telling somebody a few months ago that uh, I would love to go to Kenya, but uh, this, it, I can't I can't get it on the schedule and, you know, we end up just working it out. So I got you. Uh, definitely, yeah. uh, uh, do you have roots there or something like that? Like some people, they, well, they, no, I I did the DNA testing, and that's where ninety eight percent of <laughs> yeah, some, some DNA came from. But a good thing I do have one brother that I've been talking with and working with over the years, and uh, it's been a 
it's been a good connection for those people who want to go to um, go to Cameroon. Mm -hmm. And we have not been able to put anything together. It's been a while since I've heard from mm -hmm. him or communicate with him. But um, that's uh, one thing that people have been able to experience. Uh, just tell them to just be open and understand that it's not Ghana. It's not, um, you know, it's, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's not built in the same tourism. But right. it's just, you know, be open to the the language situation of um, it's being a Francophone country and things like that. And uh, I think he wants, I want to say he gives you more of a traditional experience also, which I just always want to make sure people are prepared for that. Um, right, right. Further out in nature and staying out in nature. Like I'm fine with going out in nature, but uh, just bring me back to my city hotel or, you know, or <laughs> in the suburbs yeah. or so on. And, and right. get my business and my work done. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> but um, that's not trying to just be fun around people, but it's just honestly, um, I just feel like some people are just open to doing that kind of journey. And I tell them that's fine. We operate things a little different as far as how we do business, not trying to push a certain bougie side of Africa. It's just when you're dealing with people, spend a certain level of money with you, you have to deliver comfort, quality, customer service, business professionals and things like that. And people don't take that lightly or simple. Uh, and it's a, it's something that, you know, you're building with your brand and it's just um, important in that situation. So um, uh but uh, yeah, uh, and that's why we just want to make sure that everywhere has you know certain quality of things. But uh, you may have, you know, like in Ghana, you may experience uh, one Africa, which has, you know, one the resort that we stay on there. Which number one, I always tell everybody, if we offer option of something traditional, then we offer a same option the same day that's modern as far as so. In in Ghana, we have one Africa. Uh, my favorite place to actually stay is uh, it's no AC, no hot water, no TV. And it's right there by the ocean in a chalet. And then you have the other hotel that has AC, hot water, fridge, TV, big bed. And it's almost brand new. And individuals get to choose from that. So honestly, me as a person, that's where I kind of deal with the, the level of traditional. Um, uh, and this is not like out in nature at the same time, too. But that's the closest we have gotten to it. But when we get to it, we offer you know the, the other option because... Um, mm -hmm. We understand some people just need their, um, you know, need their comfort. Like one of the biggest things that I hear is uh, I need a fridge because I have my medication. I need my fridge because I have certain things. And rightfully so, you definitely understand. You definitely just want to make sure everyone get what they need. So that's one of those situations. Now, uh, but for other people who want those kind of experience, I have a few different people who do those experience and things like that. Like, um, but you know, but then when you find that you send people on them, they come back and they're upset with you. Uh, but you know you tell them that you know they have to just be clear that that's that experience so nevertheless family i just uh sharing with you this uh direction and this uh how we just handling things because uh, uh everything in life is just based on experience and it's that's what you're thankful for that's why after a while going to ghana so many times uh i decided to start going to more and more countries in africa which at the end of the day they all let me appreciate what we have you know, what we have been able to establish in Ghana, because it's not that easy to establish what we established there, um, virtually anywhere else. Um, so that is that experience. So definitely, um, you know, Ghana's coming up um, in less than three months. So I'm looking forward to just showing everyone this uh, progress, our energy, and just, uh, just the beauty of the country. Um, this, uh, from this flying into the new airport to this, when you get there, it's, you know, you feel like you just... You know, you're somewhere that's just set and ready for you to be introduced into the country. Um, so, and one of the weirdest experiences is uh, just flying into Liberia, where I don't know, it was just it was, it was dark everywhere. It was just it was weird and strange. I know it's late at night, uh, but it's uh, it's like a night and day experience. Um, but they seem to be more focused on tourism uh, in Ghana, and um, out of all countries I've ever been to, they seem to be more focused on the reach out. And uh, it's also a situation where the more that reach out happens, the more other people are looking and thinking that the bank is coming to their country. <laughs> so I'm just being, I'm being real in this directly with everyone. And this, I don't know that's the situation. So I'm going to do my best to uh, you know, um, let vendors and people know to stay, you know, keep back and things like that. But, you know, I can't control people trying to sell and make a hustle. But the only thing I can do is just tell you that, um, uh, I'll always take you to markets and cultural places where you'll get everything for the best price and you'll deal with less stress and things like that. Uh, and if anyone just 
-hmm. if they don't understand what no means about three times, just let me know. And I explain mm -hmm. what no means to them in their language, which is getting security to remove them and send them somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And that's just making sure that, you know, we just protect the energy of people that we're with. Because I don't know how anyone feel about certain things. So mm -hmm. uh, some people are open to talking with vendors. Some people are irritated by vendors. Some people don't want to go to a crowded marketplace. So you're trying mm -hmm. to set the tone to just be clear with everyone about certain things. So you make provisions like... If you go to a cultural center that's too busy for you and too much drama, I suggest just stay on the bus and we make sure nobody bothers you. And um, if you want to just go somewhere a little more easier, we just get you there and things like that. And if you're open to talking with some of the vendors and them show showcasing some of their um, artifacts and arts and craft, uh, we'll just make sure that they're accessible. But we make sure to let you know that, um, be clear about prices and things like that because people tend, people who tend to, come to your hotel location, whether you get in taxi or whether you call them, whatever, it's like the price triples or doubles, things like that. And this me sharing with you the situation. Some people don't mind paying, some people do. Uh, but it's just, uh, I would think that everyone want to get more bang for their bucks. So my goal is to take you to the um, cultural center, drumming center. Um, those are in Accra and, and also take you to Kamasi, have places where you just enjoy your shopping and, and things like that. So that's the uh, setup that we have uh, on the uh, journey family. So just want to encourage everyone to uh, just read through the details on our website, africaforafricans.org. Uh, uh, make sure that you're added to the uh, group WhatsApp page. And also, uh, you know, you can just process and check out any of those videos. And as time go along, that's my goal is to generally just upload more videos and showcase more of just uh, <laughs> us, just our experience in Africa. And uh, and excuse me if I uh, show... I, um, my goal, honestly, is to never show like uh, this this extreme poverty and show like certain things. But and I would never just like throw that in the face of anybody in the country. But unfortunately, some videos you're recording, it's what it is. Uh, so and that's me directly just speaking to everyone about um, more so, um, I would say, um, Cape Town, South Africa and also um, Monrovia, Liberia. Um, but um, you're trying to shoot different things and. You you see for well, there's trash or homeless people and things like that, and it's not me trying to be offensive to anyone. I'm just you're doing a video and the, you're you're showing different aspects, whether you're in the bus and you're seeing parts of the bus and things like that. But uh, that's I don't want to be confused with some of these other people on uh, YouTube who just literally feel like it's just okay to go to people country and be disrespectful to them and things like that. Uh, so that's the only uh, drawback. Other than that, um, everything that we shoot in Ghana is just incredible and beautiful and i'm not going to jamestown to show the trash and things like that uh that's not what uh, we're there for um and um egypt and morocco is nothing that i can't that i can show you that's bad it's just they just have modern cities and beautiful uh infrastructure and things like that so that's what we're doing family we're showing the best of africa and encouraging this uh more positive energy and positive uh videos and documentation of africa and trying to get more people that are just uh, whether they you know that have never thought about traveling to Africa or you know, that are open to it just as they're open to going to uh, Dubai or open to going to uh you know uh you know Putacana or uh you know Montego Bay or this um you know any other other tropical parts of the world but that's you know our brand uh to not only just take you out um, in paradise but also this connect you with the roots of culture and this uh, a vibrant uh, energy of Africa. Um, so family, um, you know, um, we can open things for questions uh, if anybody have any questions, uh, but um, if no one have any questions, uh, you know, we're gonna be closing soon and I'll look to see if I have anything else that I need to uh, share. And while I'm talking on this, Looking at some of these Egypt videos. Let me find something. All right, let's try. Let me, let's, there we go. Let's try something different. Let's try Capoeira with Bomani and Salvador. That's July 2017. Yeah. 
Caparero family, live in Salvador, Brazil. Hey. <laughs> Yes, so family have all aspects of videos on there. So um that's the uh, biggest uh, highlight we have. So I'm going to be working on some more videos and working on a few more things. And I'll be on uh, standby. Anybody need to communicate with me, uh, you can call me, text me, uh, email me. And and um, once we get the uh, recording going, I'll upload it to the uh, group WhatsApp page. And if uh, you're not on the group WhatsApp page, you can always uh, text me and let me know. And then I can send you the link uh, for you to join uh, the page, um, the group page of your interest uh, based on the tour that you're looking to travel to. And then uh, beyond that, family, I appreciate everybody joining us uh, for another Africa Tour conference call. Once again, family, this is Bomani Tambo, your tour uh, organizer, tour leader, taking you on the journey of a lifetime to different parts of Africa for the uh, 2024 20, and 2025 um, uh, years. Uh, so family, the journey continues and uh, you take care and uh, we'll keep in touch. Bumani, when is the next uh, conference call? Uh, yes. Um, yes, yeah, sometime uh, in, in the next uh, four to five weeks uh, on a Sunday. So I haven't uh, put any new dates up and things yet. But um, looking to uh, work on new dates and, um, and also looking to work on dates directly for the tours that we're doing uh, and have conference call for those uh, groups um, ahead of time. Uh, but yes, um, as I look at the calendar, oh, wow, May is next month. So you're yeah, looking at four weeks, uh, May 19. Okay, uh, thank so you. I'll be updating that. Uh, you're welcome. Appreciate you joining. And thanks for your feedback and your energy and looking forward to uh, connecting back with you and everybody else. So family, everyone take care and have a wonderful night and uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend or week beginning. And um uh, uh, the Peace journey and continues. blessings. Happy Earth Day tomorrow. Happy Earth Day. Uh, well, <laughs> Teresa, the time just go by. Indeed. Unbelievable. <laughs> yes, I was a year ago last year. Uh, you, you came back from Senegal and Gambia with us. Amazing, right? <laughs> I know. Time flies when you're having a good time. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So this is the this uh, these journeys are like your after uh, you know these are like your pre birthday journeys. You know, that's right. Columbia, that's right. Columbia, so Morocco. that's why uh, Kenya is interesting next April. <laughs> oh yeah, that puts you even closer. The fourteenth, uh, yeah, it's spring break. Of yeah, I don't know why you took the fifteenth off. I'm not gonna complain, but I, I, I I'm concerned. <laughs> oh yes, uh, it's just one. Yeah, we're just coming back. Um, yeah, it's uh, come back one day early, but uh. If people, if anybody want to stay in Mombasa, um, and also Kubi, uh, unmute yourself if you want to. If anybody want to stay in Mombasa, you can stay longer, and you know, we'll make sure you get your Air Kenya flight back to Nairobi and back to New York City. Okay, good to know. Absolutely. So we keep on touching that, and um, I'll be working on it. So within the next um, month or so, I'll, you know, I have more things organized and set for it, and then I'll send you the flyer, and then I'll, I'll see who else is uh, interested. You know, our good buddy Juma wants to come. So that's always a great situation that he's excited and want to travel with us. Okay. As we say in, in Kenya, Jambo. <laughs> yes, uh, Jambo. Aribaka, Arigani. Yes, I wish I could. Yeah, next time I'll play one of our uh, Tanzania videos. Peace, that... Trahili, Jambo. There you Kenya. go. So you're studying yes. the... You're studying the list already excellent. So that's good uh, that you have that translation. It's, uh, it's good and it's very helpful. All right. Peace and blessings. All right. Uh, you take care. All right, family. Uh, take care. Good night.